I've always been interested in nature and biology. And in college, I studied speech and hearing sciences as well as biochemistry. And then I wanted to continue my studies uh, at the graduate level. And that led me to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And there, uh, my advisor, Jochen Schacht, had collaborations with the auditory group at the Karolinska Institute, which he traveled there every summer. And one summer they invited me over. And I basically never returned. And that was 35 years ago. I've always been interested in the inner ear. It's a fascinating organ, it's beautiful, its sensitivity is exquisite, and there are certain environmental sounds that will destroy that sensitivity. And I've always been fascinated with that. Uh, what happens in the ear to the cells or the nerve fibers when it's exposed to loud sounds? So we've been interested in looking at the mechanisms behind that, we were focusing a little bit on stress and how stress can be causing an enhancement or a reduction in the overall noise trauma. So one of the most um, common uh, stress hormone in the body is cortisol. And so we were looking into cortisol and the receptors that will modulate the cortisol actions in the ear. And uh, one thing that's very obvious with cortisol is that it's circadian. That means that the level of cortisol in the bloodstream will vary over the course of the day. It's highest in the morning when we wake up and then it will decline over the day. And we did the very first experiment and it was a success. It was very exciting to see that the cells in the uh, cochlea with this procedure that we were using would vary over the course of the day. It would be cyclic. It would be going up and down over a period of four days or so. It was very exciting. It was actually one of the most exciting experiments I ever did. The word circadian comes from the Latin word circadium, which is a roughly a 24 hour cycle. And our, all our bodily functions, the physiology of almost all the cells in our body are under circadian control. So the very first effects that we studied was uh, the cyclic behavior of the whole cochlea and how it varied over the course of the day. Uh, the second step that we did was we were looking at uh, gene expression in the inner ear. And uh, these experiments aren't the easiest to do because you have to collect samples over the course of the day. So we're talking 10 in the morning, two in the afternoon, six at night, 10 at night, two in the morning, and then six in the morning. So it's rather uh, ambitious. And we saw that the majority of genes in the mouse inner ear were also cyclic, and the majority of them were having their peak expression at nighttime. So since I have been working with noise trauma uh, and have experience with that, we decided to give animals the same noise exposure, but one at nine o'clock in the morning and the other exposure at nine o'clock at night. And what we found was immediately after that exposure, we could measure the hearing sensitivity and found that they both had the same amount of hearing loss. But then when we waited two weeks and measured hearing sensitivity again, the group that received the noise trauma during the daytime recovered to normal hearing while those who were exposed during the nighttime continued to have a hearing loss. So we could show a differential effect of day noise and night noise exposure. So we, we demonstrated a functional response of this as well. This is interesting because the majority of auditory researchers do their studies in the daytime so this means that they're missing out on a majority of uh, gene expression that is peaking at nighttime. It also opens up a whole new uh, chapter for the auditory field, and that's basically 
chronopharmacology, which means that you give pharmacological substances at the right time of the day. The wish for the coming years would be two things. The first, to clearly illustrate circadian rhythm in the human auditory system. The second wish would be to find uh, different pharmacological agents or medicines that when given at the right time of the day would have an impact on preserving hearing or repairing hearing loss. I was amazed. I was flabbergasted, I guess you could say. I was really, truly very honored to hear that um, I was nominated for the circadian rhythm work. Because personally, I think that that is the, my most fun finding in all of my career. I really am looking forward to visiting different laboratories in France. I think it's a very nice um, change for the prize because it gives the recipient of the grand prize the possibility to give back and contribute to French uh, hearing science and research. And so I'm looking forward to it very much. I can imagine having a really good time in different labs in France.